Okay. Let me pull this up here. Get this going. Okay, so I said my name is Brandon Pearson, and I'm the director of a nonprofit called Near Space Education. Our nonprofit has been around for a little while and comes out of a for profit company with over 20 years of high altitude balloon experience. So we've done about 550 or so in the last 20 years and have some ties in with the great people running this conference. And instead of getting to details about all the balloons itself, I want to share a little bit about some outreach that is new for us this um, past year that we've been doing, particularly with blind and visually impaired students. So back in January of 2023, we were approached by our local space grant director here in Indiana to go and to meet up with a company called Tactile Engineering. And they developed what you can see here is what's called a cadence tablet. This cadence tablet is a dynamic braille reader. Instead of having single line text, what it allows is to go and to have a dynamic fluid platform where each one of those individual dots you can see can move up and down based off of whatever picture you're pushing through. So here we have four of these Caden tablets that are all connected together. And we have the, along the top part of the screen, the altitude flight path of a balloon. And along the bottom path is the actual temperature change that happened during the balloon launch. For a lot of the students we're working with here and the CDC estimates around 3% of K through 12 students are blind or visually impaired. Any type of data they've interacted with is either very, very rudimentary or it's only stagnant. They've never been able to interact with anything that's actually dynamic and changing live. So this has been a really exciting partnership to go along with them as we've been prepping them to get them ready for these upcoming eclipses. We did some trial launches with them during the spring and the summer. This is one of their little solenoids that we just launched on a balloon up about 80,000 feet when we first were starting their partnership to kind of explain through the process of what we were doing with our balloons. And then the trial really got to how do we take the data from our Iridium network system that we're collecting temperature, pressure, humidity, UV radiation, all of that, and get that down from our console that's online to the computer and then eventually onto these tablets. So we did a number of tests over the course of the summer to try to prep and get that ready. And this was our big breakthrough where you can see the computer screen itself showing the elevation of the balloon as it's going up. And you can see one of the cadence tablets there that is tracking that data as well as it's moving. Now, it's definitely not very fine tuned if you're looking for accuracy because you're limited to the number of pixels on the screen. But still, this is one of the first times that a lot of these students, when we were working with them, got to actually feel the data changing as we were moving. This got us moved into our actual preparations for the launch then that we did in um, October. We worked with the students for about two months ahead of time, teaching them through some stuff about the atmosphere and just how to read data in general. Because again, even though these kids were in high school and taking high school level maths, they had only a very basic understanding of what a graph looked like or how a graph could be used to read information. So we went and helped them design the experiments they could fly in the balloon. We went out, had a beautiful day there from downtown Indianapolis. We had a trial balloon set up that we filled up with air so that the kids could go and could feel what the main flight balloon would actually feel like, which you can see in the picture. We had about 50 to 60 students that showed up and really had to talk through the whole process for those who were completely blind and couldn't participate in it. But that was, again, was the purpose for the tactile balloon there. And then we had the main flight balloon. We got about 75,000 feet, a little over that during our little over hour and a half flight. And unfortunately, the only downside about this launch was this is the first time I've ever landed a balloon in water. Right where the balloon came down, there was a tiny, tiny little stream on the other side of a quarry and we buried it right in the middle of that river and are still working on salvaging some of the payloads. But the data that came in was really spectacular. The students were able to go and feel that data graphically as it was moving in. The temperature, pressure, like we said, a little bit of the data you can see on the top of the map. And again, this is getting us ready for the big total solar eclipse where we're gonna do this in partnership with NASA, hopefully at the Indianapolis 500 with the students again in April. And that should be everything on my end. Okay, thank you very much, Brandon.